Chapter 11, the rules of listening to your client. Effective listening is a fundamental skill in our industry. It allows us to understand our clients' needs, their concerns, and their preferences. There are several rules you need to keep in mind when listening to your client. All right, so let's go through a couple of rules. One is give them your full attention. When interacting with your client, Dude, you've got to eliminate the distraction and focus entirely on the conversation. Put away your phone, maintain the eye contact, show that you're fully engaged and listening to what they're actually saying. Be patient. <laughs> All right. Allow clients to express themselves fully without interruption. Some clients, some people in general, just need a little more time to articulate their thoughts. So make sure that you're patient and let them finish telling you what you need to know. Number three is a killer, dude. Don't interrupt. Interrupting somebody is perceived as A, disrespectful. And what it's going to do is turn that client off to the point where they just may prevent telling you or sharing any more information. So watch and wait for the natural pauses and the timing so that you don't interrupt before you start responding or asking more questions or moving to the next topic, all right? The next thing is use nonverbal cues. Believe it or not, there are studies that show that 60 to 65% of communication can be given or received through nonverbal cues, like nodding your head, smiling, maintaining an open posture, act like you're actively listening and interested in what they have to say. Now, I'm going to give you a list of some bad nonverbal cues. So these are on the no list, right? Failure to keep eye contact. If your eyes are always darting around or looking at other things, uh, crossed arms. The, I hear this all the time. I had a union uh, steward tell me when I was in the corporate world, he goes, well, look, you're defensive. Your arms are crossed. I'm like, no, dude, I'm just standing in the middle of the aisle of a factory. But a lot of people perceive the crossed arms as a nonverbal cue that you're not interested Heavy sighs, <sighs> you know, hey, can I ask one more question? And you go, <sighs> that's not a good cue. Rolling your eyes, tapping your fingers, tapping your feet, all right? Uh, another thing, don't look at your watch. People check the time, like, you know, am I about out of here yet? Uh, avoid physical proximity. Don't get too close to them. Don't interrupt. Don't use a negative tone of voice. Your posture. Don't slouch. So those are some nonverbal cues that are going to be bad. Something that you can do is paraphrase or repeat what was just told to you. Repeating the key points with your client to what they just said to confirm your understanding. This not only shows that you are actively listening, but it allows for clarification and ensures that you've actually listened and got the main point of what their concern was. You should ask open-ended questions. Encourage the clients to talk a little bit more than simply saying yes. This is going to help you gather more information. And if you forgot, go back and listen to the open-ended questions uh, like tell me about, tell me more, those kind of open-ended that it requires them to actually answer. Empathy. Demonstrate empathy by acknowledging and understanding their emotions. Reflect on their concerns and express an understanding. That is the empathy part. Showing that you actually care about their point of view or their perspective or whatever you're discussing at that particular time. Never assume stuff. Avoid assumptions. Refrain from making assumption or finishing their sentence. That's going to be another one. My wife does that to me all the time. And then I just make stuff up 
to show her that, oh, that's not what I was going to say. So don't finish their sentence. Let them articulate it completely and fully and don't jump to the conclusion because that's going to lead to misunderstandings and probably problems down the road. Number nine is clarifying. If you have something that's unclear, ask them to clarify what they are actually talking about. That way you can fully understand their intention or their concern. This demonstrates your commitment to accuracy and a genuine interest in meeting their needs. You can summarize and recap, you know, when they get done talking, say, okay, so what I heard you say was, and then summarize and to confirm your understanding. This clarifies the uh, points they made. It also can bring to light any misunderstandings so you can get those straightened out. And it also reassures the client that you are actually listening to them. I used to have a friend who was a state trooper and Andy was probably the best at actively listening. He would almost always continually nod his head and say, yes, yes, I understand. Sure, yes. As that person was talking, he was confirming as they were talking. Um, so he did a lot of that. So by incorporating these rules of communication, you're going to enhance your ability to effectively counsel your client because you're going to understand their perspective, their needs, their wants, and ultimately you're going to be able to give them a more personalized and valuable service during this entire transaction.